joy and hope and strength. Fill this room with promotions and increase.
second chapter, verses 1 through 6. And man, I need y'all to pray that God give it to me like he gave it to me. It says again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, where you been? <laughs> Satan said, I've been going to and fro in all the earth, walking up and down in it. And God said, have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man. One that fears God and runs away from evil and still he holds fast his integrity. Although you moved me against him to destroy him without a cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. All that a man has will he give for his life. But if you let me have access to touch his bone and his flesh, Job will cuss you to your face. And God said to Satan, Behold, he's in your hand just saying his life. I want to use as a subject on this morning, Ben. <laughs> ben. That's it. Ben. I would like to start the car this morning by making a spiritual assumption based on a theological truth. That there is a bet in heaven on your behavior. That because of who you are in Christ Jesus, God has chosen to bet on you. That because of who is in you, God has chosen to bet on you. And because Satan is jealous of the access you have to God that he no longer has, he's upset that God has chosen to bet on you. And I, I, I want us to understand the seriousness of the bet. That it's not just serious, but it's also a privilege. <laughs> that they God would think so highly of your behavior under pressure that he would bet that you would bend but not break. Somebody throw your head back one time and say, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are skeptics who do not believe that Job was a real man. They do not believe that Job actually endured what the book says he did, but I have not found that to be theologically correct because I got word. The Bible says that there was a man named Job. It did not say there was a certain man. It, it names an individual who has a family, who has a house, who has been blessed by God, who loved the Lord with all of his heart, all of his mind, and all of his soul. Not only does the writer identify Job by name, they tell us where Job is from. Job was from a small city called Uz, which today would be located in Northern Arabia. Job, Job didn't come from a rich family, but in spite of meager beginnings, God blessed Job and gave him favor. I think what seemed to endure Job to God was that Job never forgot where he came from and who blessed him. So Job said, when I made them a wage, I tithed and I blessed the Lord. And when you promoted me, I tithed and I blessed his name. And when you gave me increase that I could never imagine, I continue to tithe and bless your name. Don't miss it. Job is saying, my worship has never been tied to what I, what I have. It's always been connected to who I have. Because what I have can be here today and go tomorrow. But who I have is from everlasting to everlasting. Who I have is a God who created the heavens and the earth. Who I have is a God who will never leave me or forsake me. Who I have is a God who always. 
telling me to resist, but you ain't submitted, which means you don't have the authority to tell me to resist, and I don't have to flee because you don't have the authority to tell me. Submit, resist. He got to go. Could it be the reason why you're being so tormented? Thank you. 
experiencing in life right now is because the enemy went to God and said, I bet if you let me do this to them, they'll cuss you to your face. And God said, that your behavior uh, 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 <laughs> will bend, but it won't break. <laughs> because Satan is believing that the way your emotions are set up, that if he puts you in a crisis, if he puts you in a crunch, and if he puts you in chaos, you will cuss God. And God is saying, that, that if you put their emotions in a crisis, in a crunch, yeah. in chaos, yeah. that they won't. That is what the pain is. Yeah. God, there's so much stuff back in this suitcase. Um, <laughs> let, let, let's address the significance of the devil needing permission from God. Come on. Regarding Job. <laughs> because the narrative shows us that unless God grants the devil access, he doesn't get admission. But the significance of this is that whatever hell is breaking loose in your life, God did not order it, he just didn't prohibit it. In other words, God is not the author, but he is the authorizer. Okay, you missed a shot right there. That, that means whatever you're going through, the devil had to get permission to do whatever he's doing. Yes, yes. Which, which means if God authorized the enemy to do it, if he gave him allowance to do it, he is betting that whatever he is doing, you are tough enough yes. to handle
Somebody throw your head back one more time and say, Bet. Bet. I was looking at the text. I saw something kind of encouraging. God says to the devil, when informed that uh, he'd been everywhere, looking for somebody to terrorize. Uh, and he said, have you considered uh, my servant Joe? What, what I saw was that the person that God handpicked to represent him against the devil um, was not somebody with a title. No, look at the text. There wasn't no bishop, no apostle, wasn't no moderator, wasn't no steward, wasn't no trustee, wasn't no elder, wasn't no prophet, wasn't no pastor, wasn't no president, wasn't no CEO, wasn't no CEO. So when, when uh, 
I used to, I used to train uh, BJ. Uh, I, I told him, I said, you're going to have to have a go-to movie. And your go-to movie is going to have to be a move. That it doesn't matter if you guard it or not. It doesn't matter how much time is left on the clock, Frank. That your go-to move is a move where you know you're going to beat them every time. Yeah. And so I was at the game. I'm at this game. I'm at this game, Mom. I'm at the game. And um, it's 10 seconds left in the game. Score is tied. 10 seconds left in the game. PJ team got the ball. Now, I'm in the stands. And I'm, I'm in the stands. And in my mind, Saying, I want him to get the ball and I want him to go to his go to move. Now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want him to get the ball because I want him to go to his go to move. And so, he, Pastor Robbie, they throw the ball to PJ. Oh. And I'm like, yes, in my head. I'm just like this. I'm kind of like flexing. I'm yes, in my head. And I'm flexing. And so, he gets the ball. And, and all of a sudden, Pastor Robbie, yeah. I'm waiting for the go to move. Oh, oh. <laughs> And PJ passed the ball back. Oh. That's what I did. Mean. <laughs> I did the same thing I said. I was deflated. To me, I was like, no, he. But then, God, they passed it back. Gave him a second chance. So 
the Lord blessed the latter end of Job yeah. Yeah. more than his beginning. Jesus. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 pounds, a thousand oxen, a thousand she asses. And he had seven more sons and three more daughters. So God doubled the material possessions of Job. And, and many people celebrate the fact that God gave Job double for his trouble. But I want to look us to look at it a different way. Okay. I want us to look at the fact that one rough chronicle season was only a slice of Job's life. That, that after that season, while God did give him devil for his trouble, you never see where the devil had access to anything that belonged to Job again. And God wanted me to remind someone in person and online, whatever you're going through right now, here it is. It's just a slice. <laughs> And if you can endure your slice, you can have the rest of your cake in peace. If you can endure your slice, you can still have joy, you can still have peace. If you can endure your slice, so glad that I'm going to be greater than y'all better walk with me no more. If you can endure your with a 
a body of believers yes. who trust God, who, who believe God, yes. who believe God can do anything, who believe God can open any door, who believe nothing is too hard for God. I want to connect with Destiny Worship Center. If you're in person, won't you come? This is your moment. This is your time. This is your season. If you're all right, just put an hour on the dance with me. Put an email out there. Just put a cell phone. God wants to know, can I trust you? Because understand, you can't resist if you haven't submitted. <laughs> You don't have authorization if you haven't submitted. The first step of submission is coming under the body of the Lord. If you're in person, won't you come? If you're online, won't you put I want this? person said, you know what, Pastor, I really want to come down. But man, walking down in front of people, I, I just got this thing, I'm just, that terrifies me. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand high enough where I can see it. If you either want to give your life to Christ or you want to become a part of the Destiny Worship Center family, just raise your hand high enough so I can see it. Thank you. 
hold on that. Keep trusting. The thing that God showed you, He will bring it to pass. The thing that you need from God, He will make it manifest. He will be your peace. He will be your strength. He will be your comfort. He will be your joy. He will fight your battles. <laughs> he will stand in the gap for you. He will protect you. Because you belong to Him. And because you are submitted, it's His responsibility to take care of you. Does that make sense? to your friends, to your loved ones, to people 